Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And in this episode, I am hopefully going to be doing some paint protection film on the front end of the Alferrari. All right guys, welcome back. And um, sorry I wasn't around last week, but uh, I had a fantastic time driving Harry, my uh, 911, to the Adelaide Rally. Uh, it was a little bit hectic with the floodwaters in the middle of New South Wales. Uh, those of you might have seen the video, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up. And uh, think about subscribing, it does help us out. Um, yes, driving through the middle of New South Wales at the moment, there is a whole heap of flooding. Basically, the centre of New South Wales is very flat and uh, the, the water's not draining. And I had to actually uh, go through a little bit of floodwaters in, in Harry to get there. Um, no, no, I didn't go through any of the closed roads, but there were a couple of places where the water was over the road. It wasn't over by much and it was not flowing. It was completely still water and it was not very deep. You could see the lines through the road. It was just, uh, yeah, just... So the only way to get through and uh, uh, I managed to get there uh, it was a little bit of uh, backtracking going through closed roads and going a lot further than normal but uh, it was such a good trip catching up with my family who were all back in Adelaide themselves and I got to do the Adelaide rally or at least most of it uh, there'll be a video coming on that in uh, you know in the future uh, when I can get around to editing it but uh, yeah Harry did not finish the rally, so there were some issues that I had to work through, um, and uh, and yeah, I didn't get the whole experience, but I got a great amount of it. It's such a great event; it was really well organised. I was very happy with the uh, the the rally in general. Uh, just uh, Harry's performance was not as ideal. All right, so back onto the Alpha. Uh, last episode you saw me cutting and buffing the whole thing and it's looking so nice and shiny. I like just coming back in the garage. It's so flat and smooth. It's looking really, really nice, which uh, is one of the things you really need to do before you put any paint protection film over it because whatever the finish is under it, that's what it's going to be after it. And uh, that's looking really good. I still have to uh, sand and buff the bonnet and the boot so that's what I'll be getting onto first and also the engine bay while I'm at it because uh, there is a bit of uh, orange peel and stuff in a couple of spots that I just want to make sure that it's all looking as good as it can before I start bolting things back on. Let's uh, get into it. Okay, so I've just glossed over that pretty well. Uh, gone through, sanded back the bonnet and uh, boot and cowl, all with 1200 first, then 2000 on the DA with the soft pads like I went through last week, and then 3000. So they're all looking pretty nice, uh, but you won't really know what they're gonna look like properly until I start buffing. And there may be little scratches and stuff that I need to go back and uh, touch up. Uh, I didn't cover last week the compound and buff, etc., that I use. So um, I use a, uh, a Rupes, Rupes. This is like a very good buff. They're not cheap, uh, but uh, I know that I've done used it a bit and uh, I thought it was worth the investment. So this is a dual action buff. Uh, you, you really want one that does the dual action so it doesn't just spin. The dual action helps, particularly with an amateur, you're much less likely to burn through the paint with a dual action buff. Uh, and the compound I use, this is uh, some 4CR, so this is sort of professional grade stuff, uh, 8065 is the one that I'm using. Uh, it's, yeah, like basically I'm using this as just a, a, one, a one pass sort of thing. I am not an expert by any means, but uh, I'm happy with the results. I think the car looks really good. Uh, for, for my amateur level, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, so just a few drops of this. Basically what I'll do is uh, I will season the pad first, just, just rub a bit in, and then it's just a, a few dabs on the pad, cover an area sort of a foot square at a time, just going in uh, two directions, backwards and forwards, and it seems to work for me. So that's how I do it. So now it's time to get stuck in, bit of compound, 
buff them up, see what they look like. Alright, it's a few hours, but it's all glossy and shiny and looking nice. I still have to do the engine bay. Let's go and do that. All right, the uh, engine bay's coming up really good. I've got uh, the bulk of it done. I went through and sanded it all by hand with the uh, the soft pad, and then I just used those 2,000, 3,000 grit foam pads by hand, and then buffed it with what I could with the big buff, and now I've got this, uh, this little tiny, sort of, it's just a cheap rotary buff, but uh, this should go through and get all the little areas that you can't get in with the big buff. All right, so this is a much better looking engine bay. Now, I did mess up in a couple of spots. Um, you might actually be able to see just here. I just sort of rubbed through a little bit, but there, there'll be a gasket and the, uh, uh, the cap that covers that. And um, just trying to think if there's anywhere else I sort of messed up. There's a couple of little spots, but nothing crazy. Oh yeah, the, the paint along here, I just noticed is crazed. It obviously had a reaction with something and it's crazed just there. And I might try and airbrush touch that at a later date or something. But at the moment, I'm not going back and stripping it all and painting it all again now. It's just going to have to stay that way. Yeah, I am not going to stop and go back and fight it and paint it and do all that stuff again now. It's just. No, maybe later uh, when we get that, get further. It is what it is. It's not perfect, it's home built, and uh, yeah, I could be chasing my tail forever if I was going through and just doing, doing this stuff. So we're gonna move on, and uh, now we need to start looking at what we're gonna do about doing some paint protection film. All right, so I am happy with the bonnet now and uh, the rest of this gear. So it's time to start putting on some paint protection film. Now, I am not an expert, but I have done a little bit on Harry before and made a horrible mess of the job. Uh, but I've learned a bit. I've watched a bunch of videos and uh, I I've, think I've got the hang of it now. So basically, there's a few sort of tools that you need to, uh, to, to do it. Obviously, first thing is you need the paint protection film. Now, I ordered this stuff online. It's the 3M uh, paint protection film. It's quite expensive. So I'm only doing the front end of the Alferrari. I think the front end is, is enough uh, to do the bonnet, the whole, all of the front guards, the, the full nose cone, and uh, I will also be doing all the wheel arch flares. So it will sort of get most of the front facing areas that are gonna cop the, uh, the most of the rocks and stones and stuff like that. And I found that on Harry, I did just sort of a, a 300 mil section on the front of the uh, the bonnet, and you can see the edge. It's fine, but uh, I think it would be better, and it's gonna look better having the whole thing done. There's gonna be a couple of little seams because the front end is all one piece, so there's no break. So uh, I'll get to that when we get there, but I thought I'll start with the bonnet, the easiest, sort of flattest area, and, uh, sort of show you through what I seem to have learned. There are better uh, videos out there, so go and uh, search some of them. But basically I needed a slip solution, which is just water with a few drops of uh, baby shampoo in it. Uh, a tack solution, which is, um, I've just used an old spray and white bottle, but uh, it's actually isopropyl alcohol and water. It's about uh, four to one, so, uh, or three to one, I think. So three parts water, one part uh, alcohol. And this helps it uh, stick. So that's the main things you need. I've also got a, uh, a nice 
fresh blade on an X-Acto knife. I like these things. You can use a razor blade or whatever as well. And a squeegee, and this one's got like a bit of a foam sort of thing over the, uh, over the edge, like sort of a bit of a felt smoother thing and, and uh, a harder edge. So first things first is uh, I'm going to cover it in my slip solution. So now I'm going to get out the paint protection film and sort of trim a rough shape to start with and uh, see if we can't get this looking pretty good. So you can see as I'm peeling the PPF away from the backing, I'm spraying the slip solution as I go. So make sure it's soaked on both sides and uh, it's a lot of slip solution under and over to make sure that it doesn't stick down until I want it to. So I'm going out here, I've sort of stuck the center loosely and then trying to pull out the edges and uh, stretch it out as much as possible. I learned the first time using this that this stuff likes to stretch quite easily. It'll stretch quite a lot, but it doesn't like to shrink. So you really need to stretch out any wrinkles uh, rather than hoping you could shrink it with heat or something later. And this is where I make the fatal flaw of trying to get a hair out of the uh, PPF and just create more and more and more issues. All right, well, in typical home-built fashion, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing twice. So um, basically, this second side of the bonnet I did is not perfect, but pretty good, probably uh, uh, good enough. Um, I learned a lot. Basically, yeah, you're needing, needing to stretch out the uh, material. I had to sort of stretch it top and bottom because that is a longer curve than this flat is. And obviously then there's it all bunch up on this edge. So I could sort of stretch it out there, but then I stretching it out in the middle here also has sort of helped it out. And um, it actually worked quite well doing it that way. This side over here is horrible. There are lots of little bits like this on here. I'm not just seeing if this will actually focus. So essentially what I did is I noticed that there was like a, a little bit of hair or something in under here. It was probably a little bit of the, uh, uh, the rag. And uh, I lifted it up and got my grubby fingers in there to get it out. And the more bits I got out, the more bits I put in there, and I ended up fighting it backwards and forwards for ages, probably half an hour, trying to get all the bits of contaminant out, and it just made more contamination underneath there, and it just, in the end, um, it was just a mess. I continued with the other side anyway, because, um, yeah, I, I just wanted, I needed the practice, and that side worked so much better. Um, very easy to get bubbles in it, bubbles of uh, water in there, but it, once it's, if you've got the sort of slip solution on there, it sort of works okay. Hopefully I've got enough PPF to do this. If not, I'm gonna have to buy some more, which is uh, expensive, but that's the way it goes on these things, is uh, you live and learn. I'm gonna leave this now and uh, move on to the car itself. Alright, so I've prepared this guard now to try and put my uh, wrap on and hopefully I do a better job than I did on the bonnet. And uh, what I've done, because I can't do this in one piece, because the whole thing wraps around, um, most cars have the front guards that are unbolt and are separate pieces. On this car, it's all welded in, the whole front is one uh, singular piece so I need to put some joins in here so I'm sort of following roughly the step nose line here to put the join in and uh, then going down here and coming straight across most of this is going to be covered by the wheel arch flare so you're not really going to see a lot of it besides this line here so I put this tape on first so that once I've actually got the PPF on there I can trim it to the edge of the tape 
let's see how this one works. All right, that is a relief. I am getting much better at this. Uh, that all came on beautifully. It's all sitting down nicely. Um, I think I've got one water bubble here, which I can just lift up and, uh, and pull it out. But uh, yeah, the, basically the whole thing is sitting really nicely over the uh, entire um, body of the car. I am very happy that, uh, yeah, that's a relief that it's not actually gonna be a complete waste of time. Just taking my time and making sure everything is clean made a huge difference. So uh, I've still got to finish off the end here. I'm going to use some tack solution in there and, uh, and, and stretch it down and get rid of these uh, fingers and, uh, and sort of finish wrapping it around. That's the, this is the hardest bit where it's stretched the most, but if I stretch it out, I can get rid of those fingers, trim it off, and uh, it should be good. All right, so one side down, time to clean up and uh, do the other side exactly the same as the first one. So that went very well as well. That I'm getting better each time at uh, fitting all these bits. So um, I just wait for this stuff to dry out a bit before I can get all the edges perfect because uh, they're still lifting up a little bit. Uh, so the next bit is to start doing this crossbar and then the, uh, the front lower section. All right, so trimming that line, there's actually the two edges together there. Oh, this keeps coming off here. I have to uh, heat that up and try and get that to stick down. But uh, the, uh, the line is really nice. And it's the same on both sides. It's, uh, yeah, it's not a bad join at all. Um, it will turn a bit darker because it's going to get some dirt and stuff in there. But that's just what it is. It sort of gives it the step nose shape anyway. Um, so now I just need to do the lower level. All right, I definitely got better and better at this the more I went on. I'm feeling much more confident about this whole process now. Um, that all looks really, really neat and tidy. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna tear the PPF off of the bonnet. All 
All right, this is coming off quite well at the moment, and it's uh, one of those things that's always a bit daunting when you're pulling off um, something like this off of paint, uh, like something you've painted, a surface you've painted, or surface anyone's painted, to be honest, because uh, it's always a worry about how well the paint is bonded to the surface and it's quite easy to peel the paint off when you do it and do some damage. So far so good, touch wood, um, it, all, it all works okay. But uh, one of the things I'm doing to make sure that I'm less likely to pull paint off is I'm actually dragging um, sideways so that I'm not trying to pull it up off of the bonnet, I'm trying to pull it sideways so I'm less likely to lift that paint up. But uh, I'm taking my time, I'm sort of heating a strip peeling it back, heating a strip, peeling it back. It's taking a bit of time, but the bonnet still looks perfect underneath so far. So uh, let's keep going. All right, I got all the flares polished, and uh, this particular one, uh, I actually rubbed it through slightly along this edge, so I'm gonna have to uh, airbrush touch that in. Uh, that's not a huge issue, but uh, I've also run out of uh, the PPF. I underestimated how much uh, the flares were gonna take. I was thinking they would just work with a few offcuts, but they're actually really long and take up quite a bit of PPF. So the fact that I needed the bonnet again is not a big issue. I learned a whole bunch doing it. Would it look better without the PPF? Absolutely. But uh, I'm happy that it's going to be protected and stay looking pretty good for a while. <laughs> so uh, with that said, I think it must mean it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, we previously covered Enzo Ferrari's early life, but now we need to cover his later years. He was a very controversial character who it was said had no other interest in life outside of motor racing. Many believed he deliberately pitted his drivers against each other, believing that rivalries would get better results. Mario Andretti apparently said that Enzo Ferrari demanded results and he would never criticize a driver pushing a car beyond its limits. Between 1955 and 1971, eight Ferrari drivers were killed in Ferrari race cars. But Sterling Moss defended Ferrari, saying, I can't think of a single occasion when a Ferrari's driver's life was taken due to a mechanical failure. Enzo was quite a reserved figure and rarely granted interviews. He seldom left Modena and Maranello, and he never went to a Grand Prix outside of Italy after the 1950s. And what I personally find particularly interesting is that he apparently never flew in an aeroplane and he never set foot in a lift. He married Laura Garello in 1923 and they had a son, Dino. Dino always suffered from poor health and died of muscular dystrophy in 1956. He had a second son, Piero, with his mistress, Laura Lardi, but divorce was not officially recognized in Italy until 1975. So Piero was not officially recognized as his son until 1978 after his wife had passed away. Piero is now vice chairman of Ferrari and owns 10% of the company. Enzo Ferrari died on the 14th of August 1988 at the age of 90. No cause of death was given. He got to see the F40 launched and just weeks after his death, Ferrari had a 1-2 finish at the Italian Grand Prix, the only race that year not won by McLaren. All right, and more learning curves from doing the paint protection film. Um, it's, uh, it's actually looking pretty good. There are still some little uh, tiny water bubbles and stuff like that underneath that apparently will bleed out of from underneath the uh, PPF. And if they don't, I can go around with uh, like a, a tiny needle and just prick the, the spaces and, and release the, the water in any air that's under there and, and that should be good. Um, I wanted to protect the front of it because I am going to use this car Thoroughly and thoroughly enjoy it and it's uh, it's gonna cop stones and all sorts of stuff I'm not gonna be babying it. It's not a show car. It is just something I'm trying to build to a good level and then 
use it. So uh, yeah, uh, a little bit more to go when I get some more paper shakes and film for the rest, the flares and the bonnet and stuff. But uh, it's coming together. It's, it's all these little things I need to do before I can start putting more and more stuff onto it. So it's, it's getting, it's getting Didn't closer. you say that you did something yesterday or the day before and then you had to redo it again? Yeah, the bonnet I messed up severely. Uh, so that is I, a stomach pressing incident. Did you no, no, that it? was that was that was a dirty hands incident, a and trying hand. to trying to get <laughs> one little hair out from underneath the bonnet, and then from getting that one little hair out, I put more stuff in there, and then <laughs> trying to get that bit out, put more and more and more until it was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so uh, it was it was really good, and it had one tiny little thing in it, and I ended up just messing the whole thing up. Whereas if I'd left that one little thing in there. It's not perfect. Nobody would have ever seen it. I could see it only if you're really <laughs> close and, and ended up messing the whole thing up. So Some people start plucking their eyebrows and they do too much on one side and then they need to even it up. But then they've done too much on that side and then they need to even it up. Yes, I have that issue. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Uh, please like, subscribe, let Jeff know what you think of the, what he's doing. He loves reading your comments. I kind of like say that every time, but it's very true. And um, if you want to follow him and help him out, Patreon to see the videos a day early with no ads as well. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs> All right, guys, see you Bye. Right. Rivalries with get better results. Mar Mario, sorry, not Maria, Mario Andretti. Let me do that again. <laughs> Between 1955 and 1971, eight Ferrari rice cars. Rice cars. Rice cars. And seldom granted interviews. He seldom, seldom, really. 1975. So Dino was not officially. Damn it. Ferrari won the Italian Grand Prix with a 1 2 finish.